Last of Us remake. We know the deal with this. It's out. It has what's sitting at right now on Metacritic. It's sitting at an 89. So it hasn't changed since I think I made my a video talking about this. Hasn't changed. Getting multiple tens and nineties. One of the most ridiculous reviews is right here. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this is IG in France. And they say here, if we were going to judge part one only as a remake, which isn't bringing anything gameplay or story wise, the score would be 70. But at the end of the day, <laughs> the Naughty Dog Masterpiece is getting its best version yet. So it couldn't be anything else than a perfect 10. Is this not the most ridiculous thing that you've ever seen a reviewer write? They come here and they say the game's a 70, but you know what? It's a masterpiece because it's Naughty Dog. We're going to give it 100 on the scoreboard. We're going to get prop up the, the score of it. We're going to help them get a higher Metacritic. We're going to do all these things, even though, you know, wink, wink, it's actually a 70 because... There is nothing new to the gameplay. There is nothing new story-wise. The most ridiculous thing I think I've ever read in a review. One of the most ridiculous things. And it's just like, this is why you look at these big sites. It's, it's hard to like trust a lot of them. It's hard to really know what's going on behind the scenes. How are they coming to these things? Did they even really play the game? Did they even play the game? You, you, you don't even, it's, you don't even know. You know, that's the issue with these. There was one, I mean... One of the best reviews I actually did read was from GameSpot. I know that's a huge site. I talked about it in my video. They gave it an 80, which is fine. An 80 is a fair score. I haven't played it, but like an 80 sounds a fair score based off of what they wrote and some of the things that they, they brought to the table in that review. And you know what? I'll just look it up here. GameSpot. All caps. And some of the things that they said in this review were really good. Like, um, let's see if I can, if I can grab it here, this here, like, this is a very like objective way of looking at it. There's an argument to be made that the last of us part one is too similar to the PS3 and PS4 versions to be considered a remake. And part of me agrees with that sentiment. The story is identical. The level design is exactly the same. And the gameplay, apart from the, looks different in the apart from the quality of life improvements, is unchanged. On paper, if you've played The Last of Us and remember it well, there's little reason to return to it on PlayStation 5. And then they goes through, he talks about what he likes, what he dislikes, all that type of stuff. Very, very fair, gives it an eight out of ten. And I this was a point I was I was trying to make. I made this point on Twitter, and I think this is a very valid thing when people are looking at these reviews, especially on Metacritic, especially with some of these reviewers that are giving it a hundred and, and giving it a hundred and, and saying things like this, or even if they don't say things like this, it's kind of almost better that they say this, even though they still give it a hundred. If they're, if you're reviewing the last of us remake and you're not taking into account that the story hasn't changed, the gameplay essentially hasn't changed. It's the third time that the game has released and they've cut 50% of the game by taking out actually good multiplayer mode, which was factions on the original game. Then your opinion of the game to me is not an objective opinion. You have to make that comparison because you can literally go out and like get the remastered version and have a great time with it. You're probably not going to regret too much going to a store and spending what, 10, 20 bucks, however much the re you can get a remastered version used now for overspending $70 before taxes, which where I live, I'm pretty sure the last of us remake is $90 before taxes. Honestly, let's see. Like, I don't think you're going to regret picking up, picking up the remastered version. I can't type for shit. Remastered version. If you can just get the, if you could just get, yeah, $89.99. If you could just get the re, uh, the remastered version instead of the remake, like I don't think 
the issue, what I, I the reason why I think these reviews are kind of dishonest is because customers who have no idea about the industry, customers who don't know about the remaster, customers who don't know what's what is available to them are going to read these reviews and think that this is an addition of the game that is worth spending ninety dollars, seventy dollars. And they're going to have such a, the best experience ever with The Last of Us Part 1 where they could literally just pick up the remaster for a quarter of the price and probably still have the same great experience playing the game. So I think that if they don't mention that, if they don't mention that this is the third time it's been released, they cut off the game and that there's, there's a remastered version out there that is like a 60 FPS version, all that type of stuff that you can play on PS5. It's just hard to take these reviews seriously. But that's not the the kicker i guess you could say to what's going on right now with the last of us remake i don't know if you guys saw this i don't know if you guys saw this but there's a firefly edition of this game and i'll, I'll go to the reddit here why not and it's a hundred dollar edition so in, in us dollars I, I like i always use us dollars but when i quote these prices i think about like how much it's like probably 130 in Canada. It's ridiculous, but there's a firefly edition and a lot of people have been posting this. They've, these have been shipped straight out from Sony and they're getting their packages here. The box just completely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. People are complaining. People are tweeting it out, showing it off. Like you can see like the packaging is different. This is like, I mean, I get packages from Amazon all the time. I get packages from Best Buy. It's never this bad, but, yeah, this is straight from Sony. Just absolutely destroy packages for an exclusive or whatever, a collector's edition of the game that they're getting it. People are saying here, mine was pretty beat up too. All four corners were damaged and the plastic holding the comics was torn on one corner, which caused the bottom part of the spines to get a bit damaged. I doubt that they'll fix it. And apparently Sony's responded and saying, tough luck, tough luck. They say there's no replacements. They're giving bullshit 20% off another game on their store. So essentially, thanks for spending the money. Now spend more money. <laughs> Holy shit. I actually just... That's actually... Yeah, they're saying, yeah, you know what? Go spend more money in our store where we make all the royalties off of the digital asset that you're going to buy that you're going to be locked to our store to play, which means that you'll probably go spend more money. But here's 20% off. And that $100 collector's edition that you just spent your hard-earned money on that's all broken... We don't care. Again, it's just another anti-consumer thing that PlayStation does. And at the end of the day, it's like, I feel bad that this is happening to people. But at the same time, it's like, for some of these people that have just know that Sony's, or not just know, but they kind of like support the way that Sony acts with, with their anti-consumer stuff. It's like, what else do you expect? I, I was not surprised about this. I'm not surprised about this. This brings me back to my PS2 days. I don't know if I ever told the story on Plumecast, but I, I never, I got into Xbox. I got into Xbox after PlayStation Two. I was a PlayStation gamer through and through, since the PS One. Um, like I got PS One, PS Two, had no interest in Xbox, but my PS Two DVD drive broke within the warranty, and I called PlayStation, and they essentially just said, "Tough luck, we're not replacing it." because it wasn't covered under some weird stipulation of the warranty, whatever it was. Anyway. And that's how I ended up being like, you know what? I'm just literally just going to go play Xbox. And then my experience on Xbox has been great literally since the OG Xbox in terms of customer service, in terms of just everything that's going on now, the ecosystem, all type of stuff. So it's just, I'm not surprised about this. This is something they've been doing since like their inception. Like this is terrible. You go down here into the comments and people are just like posting the additions of their games that have been like, uh, this. Uh, hey, they, these people got it in a cardboard box. So they're just like having these weird shipping things, but I don't know. The last of us remake, there's people who think it's like you know, the greatest thing ever. It's worth the money. It's just, I think objectively, it's just not worth the money. It just isn't half the games out. There isn't a huge improvement in, in the gameplay, if any, We'll